In today's video, we will discuss the switch in interlock enforcer feature in ETAP. This great feature can assist engineers or operator when performing switching activities to ensure that the conditions are appropriate and therefore prevents these activities from becoming unsafe. So as the name of this feature hints, when this feature is activated or enforced, it checks the network to see if there are any switching devices that contains an interlock that needs to be satisfied before or after performing these switching activities. And to illustrate the enforcer capability here, we will work with the network showing. The objective is to set up an interlock logic scheme that prevents paralleling these two power grid sources while operating under normal condition. In other words, we want to keep the cross-tie circuit breaker 7 open during normal operation. However, during outages or in support to some maintenance activity, we want to close that circuit breaker here such that the available unit can feed the loads on the other units. And in order for us to do that, we are going to deal with the equipment editor associated with circuit breaker 7. And in here, we are interested in the interlock tab. The first thing we should do here is probably define what's an interlock. And basically, an interlock prevents an action to take place until other conditions are met. And in the interlock tab, as you can see here, we have two sections. The first section deals with the pre-switching logic. And basically that provides us with a place where we can set up some conditions that must be met before taking the breaker to the open or closed position. In the post switching logic section, you can set up some conditions or interlocks that would be triggered as a result of taking your breaker to the open or closed position. So remember that circuit breaker 7 is maintained open during normal mode of operation to prevent paralleling these two power grid sources. In order to support some maintenance activity, we want to be able to close circuit breaker 7 such that the available bus can feed the other bus loads. Okay. But in order to change the state of circuit breaker 7 from open to close and prevent paralleling these power sources, we want to make sure that either circuit breaker 2 is open or circuit breaker 6 is open. These are the pre-switching conditions that need to be met before taking circuit breaker 7 to close position. So let's do that. We'll come to circuit breaker 7. We'll go to the interlock tab and in here, the action to be taken is to take circuit breaker 7 to close position and the pre-switch in logic that need to be met before taking the action and that would be circuit breaker 2 in an open position or we can add a line and then we can say here the other breaker is circuit breaker 6 has to be equal to open position okay let's apply that now we can change the status of circuit breaker 7 from open to close and see if the interlock that we incorporated is actually working or not so let's try that we have uh, circuit breaker 7 here i highlight the element and then i press the t to toggle the status from open to close and as you can see the interlock enforcer brings this alarm view which tells me during the configuration normal when you take circuit breaker 7 to close position it would conflict with two other elements here that is circuit breaker 2 and circuit breaker 6. Now as you can see here the conflict section does not give me enough details about the type of logic used to create this conflict right but in order for you to see that just click on the line here anywhere and it will bring the interlock tab associated with the breaker that had the conflict. Okay. Now observe that in order for you to resolve the conflict, you can see that circuit breaker 2 has to be in an open position or circuit breaker 6 has to be in an open position. Otherwise, the conflict will still persist. So we can come here and change circuit breaker 2 to open position and then see if the activity to change circuit breaker 7 to close position will be permitted. And if I do so, you can see that the enforcer did not prevent me from closing circuit breaker 7 because the pre-switching condition for closing circuit breaker 7 
has been met. Now observe that our design is not perfect. If I am about to commence an activity to take circuit breaker 2 to the closed position, there is no interlock in place that will prevent me from taking this activity. And therefore, there is a vulnerability in this design because it did not achieve the overall goal that is preventing paralleling these power grid sources while you are in normal operation. And in order to resolve this vulnerability, we need to ensure that these three breakers will not be closed at the same time. And to do so, we need to incorporate some interlock into circuit breaker 2 and circuit breaker 6 such that before taking the breaker to the closed position, it will ensure that one of the other two breakers is open. And therefore, when I take the breaker to the closed position, will not parallel these two power grid sources. Now we can start with circuit breaker 2 and then we can go to the interlock tab and incorporate a pre-switching logic such that before taking circuit breaker 2 to the closed position, we need to have circuit breaker 6 open or circuit breaker 7 open. Okay. Now this would be uh, appropriate for circuit breaker 2. We can do the same thing for circuit breaker 6. You go to the interlock tab and then we ensure that before taking circuit breaker 6 to the closed position, we need to ensure that uh, circuit breaker 2 is open or 7 is open. Okay. Now we incorporated the interlock into circuit breaker 2, 6, and 7. It should really fix that vulnerability and also it would prevent us from closing these three breakers at the same time. So now let's go ahead and reset our model and then we will activate the enforcer and see how it behaves. Now to reset the model to go back to just uh, represent the normal mode of operation, remember that circuit breaker 7 was initially open. So let's reset that status here back to open. Now we can activate the interlock enforcer and then perform a switching activity by taking circuit breaker 7 to close position. So we'll highlight circuit breaker 7 again and then toggle that to close and as expected we've received this alarm telling me the action to take circuit breaker 7 to close conflicts with these two circuit breakers because they're not in the proper position. And this was expected. Now we can have two options. We either click OK and if you do so, that will disengage your enforcer. However, if you click Cancel, it will disregard the switching activity that we were about to perform. So we click Cancel because the conflict is not resolved. And in order for us to resolve this conflict, we need to go back here to circuit breaker 2 or circuit breaker 6 and set one of them to open position such that the interlock condition will be met. So let's just work with circuit breaker 2. We'll take circuit breaker 2 to the open position. I go back to circuit breaker 7 and then I toggle that and it is as expected permitted. And now we have circuit breaker 7 close resulting in bus 2 feeding bus 1. And now if I take circuit breaker 2, to the closed position as expected now the issue is fixed and I have the alarm coming in to tell me that this action is not permitted because circuit breakers 6 and 7 are in closed position and now as you can see we prevented closing circuit breaker 2 after closing circuit breaker 7 now you can either click OK or cancel remember that if you click OK that means the enforcer will be disengaged but if you press cancel, that means the action or the switching activity is canceled. Finally, uh, for completeness here, there's a couple of things that I didn't share with you. Uh, the first one is related to uh, the syntax. So if we go to any of your switching devices and go to the interlock tab, you can see that basically this box here is a syntax logic checker. And if you have an error in the line of your logic such that you didn't use the proper parentheses or you did not have the proper logic or your logic operator does not have two inputs, you will get some errors and this error must be fixed in order for the interlock to take place. And always make sure that uh, the two lines are pointing to the appropriate line that you are executing 
such that you can read the syntax because if there is an error here, your interlock will not be executed. The second thing I want to share with you here is that uh, these interlock statements for the pre or post switching does not have to be a Boolean logic expressions like here. It can be as simple as just uh, taking a reading from a multimeter device, and then we can compare that reading to a, a set point value. And if the statement is true, then that interlock is executable. The reading value to be loaded uh, sometimes have to be uh, coming from the load flow. So if you are going to use a multimeter device like we have here on this one line diagram, make sure you run your load flow once and then this multimeter will basically load that value and we can use that as a value to be compared to. So that's uh, another thing that I didn't mention to you. But with that, I wanted to thank you for tuning in to Power Source to power up your skills and career. Thank you for watching me today and good luck.